I'm standing in my passive solar greenhouse and today I want to talk to you guys about using biological pest control. And so what I mean by that is using predatory insects to manage pest type insects. In the case specifically that we're going to talk about today, I'm referring to aphids being my predominant pest in this greenhouse and I'm managing them with what's called parasitic wasps. So these are a little tiny wasp. They're, they look just like uh, any other wasp you'd see, but they're tiny. They're less than half the size of a fruit fly. They're very hard, difficult to see. And what they do is they lodge themselves, they sting an aphid, and then they drop a bunch of larva into the aphid, and then that aphid becomes a mummy, and a bunch of this larva grows inside the aphid, and then it hatches and re releases more parasitic wasps. So if some of you followed my weekly updates that I was doing at the beginning of 2016, I talked about this a little bit in there because I had problems with aphids getting into our nursery stock, like our, particularly our peppers and our basil. And it was becoming a problem. And so I consulted with a local agronomist that I know, and he suggested and prescribed parasitic wasps. So he gave me a little jar of these wasps and I released them to the greenhouse. And in about three weeks, my aphids had completely disappeared. And so what I thought happened there is that they exhausted their food supply and they left. And that's what can happen. And so it's important if you're using some kind of biological pest control that you have to keep feeding that wasp or whatever it is. There's other types of biological pest control out there. And uh, I thought that's what happened until I had, if you guys are following the vlogs, I had this bed planted with basil uh, in the fall and then we had an early winter crop with it and uh, it got really out of hand with aphids and so I didn't notice the parasitic wasps at the time still being there maybe because there was so many aphids that they it would take them a time to catch up to that uh, volume of pests but when I pulled that basil out I noticed that the aphids moved quite quickly into my lime tree and I thought we'd gotten rid of it. I mean, we, we, we certainly pulled this plant, this crop out, and we even flame weeded the soil to kind of like burn any residual aphids that were sitting in the soil. And that did work, that got rid of most of them. But some of them have moved into my lime tree and now they're sort of, they're procreating themselves on my lime tree. But I have noticed a return of these parasitic wasps. And it's really cool because you can see this sort of golden shape aphid and it's 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 basically a mummy and so what that will do is hatch a bunch of these parasitic wasps and they'll continue to expand their population eventually getting rid of the aphids and so what I'm gonna have to do this time is make sure that I keep prolificating aphids in a way so that these these bugs have a food supply so a lot of people say to me in the comments, Curtis, why didn't you put ladybugs in your basil? Or why don't you use ladybugs? Well, ladybugs, I think they work in a garden sense and I've, I've seen people use them. I've tried them myself, but the problem that I've seen with ladybugs is that they just eat and then they leave. Whereas these wasps, they'll con their, their population will compound itself exponentially and they'll really get rid of the problem, whereas the aphids just, or the ladybugs leave and they eat and then leave. So I suppose it's, it's possible that with the ladybugs you could, if you kept them confined in the greenhouse, perhaps they would work, but these have been working incredible. And I don't know where to tell you to buy these. I know that these came from a company in Belgium called BioBest. And so if you just search that, you'll find that company. But on their website, I don't see any way to order them. You probably have to be an agronomist or something. So I would suggest consulting with uh, your local ag extension agent or finding an agronomist, an, an agronomist and seeing what they can do. Because that's the only place that I've been exposed to these and have been able to find them. So we'll see over the next couple weeks how this pans out. But it's pretty interesting because I saw them, I saw aphids coming in here and I'm like, oh man, now this is going to be a problem. And I actually tried to find a way to order more of those parasitic wasps myself, but I couldn't on their website. So I was kind of at a loss on what to do and still I, until I started noticing little mummified aphids coming along 
and now I'm every day I come in here and check I see more so the wasps themselves are pretty hard to spot um, you know here's one in here I'll just splice it in but they're they're really small and they don't seem to just hang around as much as other bugs like I mean there's certainly fruit flies and stuff in here as well uh, they're a lot easier to spot but the wasps themselves are hard to spot all I see is the mummies and so that's good enough for me if I see that I know that they're doing their job so I'll keep you guys abreast on how this pans out over the winter so if you want to see more stuff like that please hit the subscribe button right now like and share these videos with your friends and check out my website where I now am posting all of my videos right to the front page of my website you can navigate through there that's the urbanfarmer.co and I've got a Patreon page now. I will leave the link below if those of you want to support me through there. Okay, talk to you soon.